this easy for you. Many times in life, we're kind of confused of what to do next. Like, like what should I be doing? Uh, like, where do I start? Uh, how do I get my life on track? That's a, we spend years trying to figure that out. What is my calling? Anybody have that thing? What should I, what's my purpose? Jesus makes it easy. He said, listen, here's, here's all you need to do. I want you to sell everything you have. I don't want you to give it to the church. I want you to personally disperse the proceeds from selling everything you have. I want you to have some skin in this game. Why would Jesus ask him to do something so incredible? The man was already a good man. He was already a faithful man. Why would Jesus ask him to do that? Somebody help me with that. Yes, ma'am, please. He loved his stuff more than he loved yeah. Jesus. He loved this stuff more than he loved Jesus. Yes, yes, that's, that's true. That's true. That's right on the surface, yes. All right, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. And it would change his heart oh. if he was to actually experience the selling, oh, the giving yes. up, yes. the giving to others, yes. blessing them. It would change his heart, not just his mind. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point she brings out. To be personally involved in blessing other people is going to work a change. Yes, ma'am, please. He didn't know what he lacked, and that would tell him what he lacked. He didn't know what he lacked. Yes, yes. Sir, yes, please. Excellent. Yes. I don't think his problem was money. Okay. Because Jesus said one thing you lack. Now, if I'm sitting here and I don't have any money, then, then this is not talking to me. Okay. But this is talking to all of us. Yes. One thing that we lack is the unreserved surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it be money, whether it be our thoughts, yes. whatever it is. Yes. That one thing is for all of us. Yes, uh, absolutely true. Y yes, yes, please. Just a little thought about uh, the sense of security. Uh, security, and so if you put your security, it, it implies trust or faith mm -hmm. in the one that's talking to you. So he would have to transfer his sense of security to something else. Yes. Someone else. Oh, I'm glad God doesn't expect us to do that. We <laughs> have to be willing to do that. I'm glad that God doesn't expect us to transfer our sense of security and trust to Him alone. Mm. I'm glad I can depend on my 401k for my retirement. <laughs> I got a little money set aside. I got some things. I'll be okay. I don't really have to trust God that much. Unless I get sick, then I'm going to really ask for him. <laughs> so she, she raises a good point. That, that, and, and all through the Bible, as soon as she said it, I think about story after story after story after story where Jesus' purpose was to get his disciples and others to trust him. That's how he was trying to do it. He, I mean, then listen, then I'm, then I'm going off. Uh, I'm getting back on track. I'm trying. just pulling over for a second. The disciples are in the midst of a storm on the sea. They're seasoned boaters. They know everything about surviving the sea. A storm comes up that is so bad that they actually thought they were going to die. This was a storm they had never experienced before. In their entire lives, they had never been in a storm this bad. They knew they were going to die. The lightning flashes, and they see Jesus in the boat asleep. <laughs> He's sleeping like a baby. The disciples wake him up. They say, carest thou not that we perish? That's what they're like, don't you, don't you care? We're about to die. And here's the, here's the amazing thing. We fast forward the story. Jesus gets up and he rebukes the winds. Now, I believe personally that he didn't scream out aloud, you know, peace, be still. I believe he just said, peace, be still. That's, that's the kind of power I think Jesus said. He just said, peace, be still. It was over. But the amazing part of that story is that he turns to the disciples and asks them, why were you afraid? us, why were you afraid? What I hear Jesus saying is, is saying is don't you know how much I love you? That I would not allow anything to happen to you 
Don't you know that by now? After all we've gone through, that you don't have to fear with me. It's an incredible story. But it's one that's repeated over and over and over again. That he wants us to trust him, but out of love. I guess I saw your hand back there. Yes, he told them they were going to the other side. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. Which means we're going to get there. I like that. I like that. Anybody, anybody else see something in that story? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I think he's saying don't be afraid of dying. Also. Okay. Because God doesn't always deserve life. It's true. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there's story after story where... A prayer was not answered. And we know in our example. Death is the enemy of man. It is the last great enemy that will be destroyed. We were not created to die. That's not why we were made. I mean, humanity is so fascinating that God wanted us to live forever. There's a detour now because of a bad choice. We are all paying the price of someone else's bad choice. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're, we're dealing with. But God is so loving that he's got it all worked out. He says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, all of this stuff is going to be passed. You won't, you, you'll say like, I remember Ellen White wrote that she wrote that heaven is cheap enough. Amen. Everything that she had gone through, heaven was cheap enough. I couldn't recall my trials and tribulations and pain and anguish. That's, not, that's how loving our God is. So, okay, so uh, we're, we're supposed to be, did I miss anybody? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, please. I happen to be a worker. I'm thinking of the rich young man, and I couldn't relate to the finances. But I can be busy getting programs and doing things. I got stuck during the COVID. All that got shut down. Mm. And I was left without any programs, anything to do, yes. but go out and work uh, disaster response with other people, meeting people with their needs. Yes. And I essentially wasn't running it. I was helping. And so whoever brought up the fact of the man was told to go and give his yes. uh -huh. poor or whatever, uh, Oftentimes, it's harder to go and deal with people. But you're better for it, right? Here's the truth about choices. And we're, this lesson is about, you know, choose life. We're going to talk about life in a second. <coughs> Our choices should make us more kind, more tender, and more compassionate. If it is a godly choice and a part of our spiritual growth, it should result or lead me going in the direction of making us more kind, more tender, and more compassionate. And as disciples of Christ, we're going to have to, to push back against the world's anger that is swirling around and now has found its way in the church. Amen. Where instead of being more tender, more kind, and compassionate, we're mean. Amen. We're angry. Amen. We're fearful. We're upset. We're looking at what other people are doing and what they shouldn't be doing, what they shouldn't have, and what they should have. Amen. And we miss the whole point of being a disciple. I went off on a tangent. I apologize for that. I just thought I'd get that out while I could. That's all right. And I got some verses to back some of that up now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not just saying stuff. I'm not just saying stuff. The fruit of the spirit is what? Does anybody know that text? Love, joy, peace, long suffering. It's all positive stuff. It's not anger. It's not fear. It's not contempt. It's not disgust. That's not the fruit of the spirit. That's the fruit of the enemy. Mm. And he causes us to think it's a godly thing. That's what he did to Eve. Amen. 
He caused her to think the negative was a positive. And here we are today. Here we are today as a result of that. Okay, so I ain't gonna get back to what we're supposed to be talking about. Uh, let's see here. We were in, we just read Mark chapter 10. Uh, let's get back to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I just want to read another verse. I think I have another few minutes here. Uh, let's see here. Chapter 30. I have to ask you a question here. Okay. I'm going to use I'm going to use our uh, our memory text verse 19. I'm going to read this one. It says, "I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live." Now. On the surface, it sounds like it's just saying, choose being alive versus being a dead. I think it might mean a little more about that. What do you think it means when it says, choose life? Eternal life. Yes, ma'am, please. I saw your hand there. Yes, please. Eternal life. Eternal life? Okay, I, I would accept that. Anybody else? What is life? What do you think could be included in choosing life? And what? life more abundantly. And life more abundantly. Oh, I want to see what that means. I heard that a lot. Who, who do I see? Same, same, same thing. thing. You're going to use that same text too? That they might have life and have more abundantly. While I'm going to get his comment, does anybody know where that text is found? He said it, she said it, I want to make sure it's in the Bible. John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. All right, we're going to get there in a second. Yes, sir. Spirit of prophecy says heaven begins here. Heaven begins here. I, I like that. Yes, heaven, it should be. It should, our home should be little heavens on earth. Yes, yes, ma'am. Please, there's a fight for you. The very next verse in twenty, Amen. it says, "For the length, he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou hast made us dwell in the land." So it was current life and health. He was talking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was a physical component to what he's what was being said. You can live and prosper. But I'm suggesting that there's a little bit deeper thing to more than just being alive. Yes, sir, please. I, I believe that the life is a life centered on God. And once you know what your life is centered on, that's where your life is. Well, I like we're all living, you know, breathing, yeah. hearts beating, yeah. but it's where, how you're centered. You can center on God as he was hoping the Israelites would do. Or you centered on you know paganism like the, the yeah. nations that he's actually going to destroy. Yes, excellent point. I see the gentleman's hand there because he really he's really slammed worshiping idols. So absolutely, yes, sir, please. Um, Jesus said in John fourteen six, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Yeah. And in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, God is asking them to receive Christ. Oh, Amen. I love that. I love that. Anybody know? Yes, ma'am. Right here, right here. Great, great, great. He that hath the Son hath life. Oh, he that Son hath life. Okay, so I, I, yes, 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 ma'am. Then I, I want to get the text here. Yes, please. I'm divine, you're the branches. I'm divine, you're the branches. So you, your life depends on being connected with me. And we're, we're going to see what that connection is all about. Anybody else? All right, where was that verse that he quoted and this kind lady quoted? Somebody told me where it was. Where was it? John 10. John 10, 10. Let me see if I can find this. Make sure you guys aren't making stuff up. Let's see here. Let me see if that's really in John 10, 10. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. I'm going to read verse 9 and verse 10 of John chapter 10. It says, I, who's speaking here? Jesus. It, if you have an old-fashioned Bible, it's underlined in red. It's in red type. All right, it says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. That's not where it said it doesn't end. It does it. That they might have life, and that they might have it how. Anybody want to hazard what that could might mean to have 
life more abundantly? I mean, if you're alive, you're alive. Yes, ma'am, I see you there. Oh, she says that peace and joy. How, how, how significant would it be to live a life with peace and joy? You think it would make a difference? <laughs> a big difference. A big difference. I'm going to follow up on her because she says something very, very true. Yes, yes, please. For me, it would be to sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit at the feet of Jesus. All right. I wonder what we learned if we were sitting at his feet. Peace and joy. Peace and joy. Okay, I got some. We got. We'll do a fire round right quick. I'm gonna go quick through these verses, and I'm going to take what this kind lady said and build our argument on what life is. And some of you guys will know these verses by heart. Psalms 119, 165. 119, 119, 165. Hold on here. I remember 119 is a long verse, a long chapter. Oh, just a side note. I was at our church uh, some time ago, and there was a young boy. Uh, maybe he's around 10 or 11. His parents, I know he had, he recited the entire 119 song. Every verse in front of the church. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> uh, uh, his parents are applaud, applaud his parents. Okay, all right, here we go. We're going to do a fire round right quick. We're going to do a fire round and see if I can prove this kind lady's point. Verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's one, that's one proof point of what she said. I'm going to jump all the way to the New Testament, Romans 8, 6. Romans 8.6. Let's see if I can get that quickly. Romans 8.6. I'm going fast now. Oh, here it is. Romans 8.6. It says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I got one more. Uh, I'm going to go jump back to the Old Testament. We're going to go fast. I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. And 3. 26. Did I miss something? No. Oh, okay. 26.3. So, okay, you do the first I was going to. Okay, 26.3. And I'm going to read it. I'm going fast now. It says, Thou will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Man, how valuable that would be today in 2021 to be in perfect peace. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stay Got to make the right choice. And because he what? Trust. I told you it's all about trust. I told you that's what it was about. Uh, I have one more verse. I have one more verse. John 16. You, you're going to know what this verse is as soon as I tell you. John 16. John 16 and uh, verse 33. John 16 verse 33. Whatever, just like a query coming in. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, John 16, verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in what? That in me ye might have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But then what does he say? Tell me, how could he say in one breath, in the world there's going to be tribulation, but be of good cheer? Somebody tell me how that works. How does that work? Yes, sir, please. Because of what verse that man quoted up there, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I like that. I like that. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am, please. To live in Jesus is joy and peace. <laughs> to live in Jesus is joy and peace. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Did I miss somebody? Yes, sir, right here. Isaiah 3217. 3217. What does that say, sir? The effect of righteousness is peace. The effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. That's a beautiful text. Mm -hmm. And it just proves this kind lady's point. And it goes back to what I was saying about Jesus' attempts 
to get us to trust Him. We can take a barometer of our spiritual experience by the level of peace we have. If I am tossing and turning all night, and I am stressed out, and my digestion is messed up because I'm so stressed, there's something wrong. Amen. I'm not saying there's not real issues that we have to deal with. Some of us are carrying heavy burdens. We're taking care of aging parents. We're taking care of children. We're trying to make finances work. I mean, there's, there's stress in life. But he said, in the midst of that, I want you to have comfort, and I want you to have peace. And I want you to be stressed about that. I want you to be just like those disciples when they were when they were in that storm. And I say, why were you afraid? That's what I'm saying to you. Why are you afraid? Don't you know how much I love you? That I love you so much that if you would just trust me, it's going to work out. It may not work out the way you think it should, but it's going to work out in the right way. But you got to trust me. And I am convinced that every day, in some way, that God is trying to lead us to trust Him more. Amen. Every day, there's some way He's just trying to say, trust me a little bit more. I know you're going through something heavy. That's the result of a bad choice of our forefathers, of our, our Adam and Eve. But I want you to trust me that I have your best interest at heart. I'm not going to let you go through this thing by yourself. That's, 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 that's life. That, that, that's what it is to have life. Oh, I, I think my time is just about gone. Uh, oh, somebody said no. Oh, fine. Somebody said no, not yet. <laughs> All right, well, they said another 30 minutes. So. <laughs> I'm going to go back for another 30 minutes. Uh, I want to go. I want to go. Uh, back to our text here and our memory text where we were at 37 and we're just going to just have, we're just have a few minutes I knew I couldn't cover everything but I want to just talk about verse 17 just for just for four minutes just for four minutes that's all we have it says we're in chapter 30 verse 17 we've already read verse 16. 15, verse 16, verse 19. We're jumping back to verse 17. And it says, But if thy heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. And then it goes to verse 19, the consequences of what that choice would be. Now just, just for a few seconds, why do you think the people who had gone through so much and experienced so much of God's blessings would be drawn away to idols. Anybody have a, a thought on why people with such a rich experience would be drawn to idols? Yes, ma'am, please. There's a phrase that says familiarity breeds contempt. Okay. When people just get too used to what they took it for granted. Oh, okay. They took it for granted. I like that. I, I like that. Anybody else has an answer for it? The heart is wicked. The sense will be wicked. Okay, I get that. All right, yes, uh, yes, yes, please. Idols were something physical that you actually touch and feel and look at, and they were, and had special people to build them and make them, but they were there, and uh, I think they lacked that. They also saw these other great nations they were supposed to, over, to overthrow. They were fearful of them, thinking that their gods were more powerful than the god they were actually serving. There's just something about our human nature that we want to see and do. That's, that's why the faith walk is a challenge for some time. Because we want to earn God's blessings and we want to see those tangible things. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand there. God put that hole in our soul for Him to fill. And anything we put before God, anything, that makes it an idol. Okay, that's true. And I think if we had read the previous chapter, it's, it's, it talks about, listen, when things are going so well for you, you know, things are just going well, you know you're living in blessing. Don't, don't forget God. Don't forget how you got here. Don't forget all I did for you. 
and then turn a different direction. Sir, was your hand up? Well, oh, your hand too? Okay, yes, please. There's a mic coming, so we'll make sure we hear you. This gentleman right here. All right, there it is, all the right there, okay. The fellow earlier talked about touching the idols in this little thing. Egypt is two phases, two aspects. One is physical, they were delivered from, from uh, Egypt physically, but not spiritually. Mm, that's fine. And God worked for 40 years trying to deliver them spiritually. Good point. Yeah, because we read the text, they said, we won't even go, we want to go back to Egypt, which is incredible. Yes, sir, and then I'll come to you. Yes, please. I think it's a mystery. A mystery? You know, we live in the midst of divine love. You know, God has told us, and he surrounds us with it, and we have evidence in our lives. Yes. And yet we also live in the land of the enemy, who is yes. constantly trying to trip us up. Yes. Excellent point. And then before you comment, that's why we need church. Mm -hmm. I need to be encouraged by you. I don't need to be discouraged by you. I got enough drama outside. <laughs> but when I come together with my brothers and sisters, let's encourage each other in the Lord. Yes. Let's give some testimonies about God, how God brought me through this week. Let's not talk about all the other stuff that's going on. Let's encourage each other because we're struggling, some of us. We're struggling. Boy, but if I just have someone just to help me make it one more day. My life might be different. Yes, sir, please. I think it's the power of Satan. Absolutely. Absolutely. We know the enemy is going to... Listen, just like he did with Eve, where we talked, started at the beginning. He would do everything he can to get us from the source of our life. I mean, this strategy has to change. He'll get us to distrust God, to doubt his, witness, his wisdom, and feel bad that we can't understand... His, his plan. We can't see the plan. And we lose heart. Yes, ma'am, please. I think we, as humans, find it easier to, to do a ritual or do some kind of thing other than actually doing what the Lord asks for to give our hearts to Him. Yeah. It's easier to do those rituals. Yes. I was a, okay, that's the bill. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> I should have recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think it was Martin Luther who was going up the steps on his knees. His story is told. And he heard that. Just to live by faith. But the faith is not just something to puff us up. The faith to trust God with everything. I'm not just trusting Him to help me get through a bad situation. I'm trusting with my soul. I'm trusting that the choice I made to follow him is the right choice. Amen. I see other people prospering around me. But I'm going to trust God. Yeah. I see other people spending their time this way. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to bless somebody. I'm going to like this kindness. I'm going to help someone. That's what he's calling the church to do. Our reward, the incentive, which we can spend a lot of time talking about, will more than compensate for anything that we gave up on this earth. Amen. Anybody believe that? Amen. All right, well, thank you so much. Listen, my time is now officially gone. She's writing the bail on me. <laughs> uh, but I think we're going to pray together before I sit down. And my prayer will be simple. God, just help us to trust you more. That's all I want to pray right now. Let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we've just simply gone through your word and we are convinced by the evidence of Bible texts that you want us to trust you more. You know our weaknesses. You know how prone we are to go in a different direction to ignore your voice. But today, Lord, we're saying forgive us. Forgive us of our past. Just help us today, Lord, to trust you more. And we promise we'll have a testimony about how good you were. Yes, Lord. Because we're asking this in Jesus' name. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.